from rags to riches. Their lives were forever altered by the stroke of luck. But what happens when the glimmer of newfound wealth begins to tarnish? Join us as we explore the stories of individuals who, after winning the lottery, found themselves navigating a complex world of financial pitfalls, strained relationships, and the ultimate question, was it all worth it? As the saying goes, be careful what you wish for, because in the world of lottery winners, not all that glitters is gold. When Andrew Jack Whitaker experienced the unimaginable after hitting a jackpot, in a world where winning the lottery is often synonymous with overnight riches, there exists one man who shattered the mold. Meet Andrew Jack Whitaker, a millionaire entrepreneur who, on that fateful Christmas morning in 2002, secured his place in history by clinching the largest Powerball jackpot ever awarded to a single winner. Already a millionaire through his thriving West Virginia contracting company, Whitaker's remarkable story begins with an incredible twist. He chose a lump sum payment of 113 some million instead of an annuity from his $314.9 million lottery ticket. But what sets Jack Whitaker apart from the typical lottery winner's tale is that his journey from poverty to wealth had already been charted through sheer hard work and determination. His company, at the time of the winning ticket purchase, was pulling in a staggering 15 million in contracts annually. Yet as we delve into the intriguing tale of Jack Whitaker, you'll discover that the lottery's colossal windfall not only enriched his bank account, but also brought unforeseen changes and challenges, proving that sometimes wealth's true impact lies not in its accumulation, but in the transformation it can bring to a person's life. Jack Whitaker's tale of newfound wealth was initially marked by extraordinary acts of generosity. He established a charitable foundation, contributed to the construction of churches in his beloved West Virginia, and even bestowed remarkable gifts upon the woman who sold him the winning ticket. A new house, a new car, and a substantial sum of cash. A shining example of philanthropy. But even such noble intentions couldn't shield him from what is often referred to as the lottery curse. Unfortunately, not all states grant anonymity to lottery winners, and Whitaker's victory was thrust into the limelight. This sudden fame brought a deluge of individuals seeking his financial assistance and favors, turning his life into a relentless parade of unwanted attention. What's more, Whitaker's peculiar habit of stashing considerable sums of money in his car became a widely discussed topic. It led to a shocking incident when, during a visit to a strip club, nearly half a million dollars mysteriously vanished from his car. This loss was emblematic of a downward spiral. Another incident followed, with an additional $100,000 disappearing from a separate vehicle. As if that weren't enough, his company was bombarded with baseless lawsuits from those seeking access to his deep pockets, leading to a financial hemorrhage in the form of exorbitant legal fees. Amid the mounting pressure, Jack Whitaker began to unravel. He turned to alcohol and found himself in confrontations. His interactions with women took a disturbing turn as he offered money for intimacy or exposure. The relationship he had cherished with his wife, his companion since the tender age of 14, crumbled under the relentless strain. But as astonishing as these trials and tribulations were, the darkest chapter of his story was yet to unfold. Jack Whitaker was a man who cherished family above all else. His devotion to his granddaughter Brandy was unmistakable as he showered her with a generous allowance and not one, not two, but four cars. It was an expression of love that anyone could admire. But the path to tragedy often starts with the best intentions. However, as the riches flowed, so did a dark cloud of misfortune. Brandy's newfound wealth attracted a dangerous crowd, leading to a nightmare that no one could have foreseen. A tragedy unfolded within a house that Whitaker was developing when one of Brandy's boyfriends succumbed to a fatal overdose, and she found herself implicated in a web of despair. Friends shunned her, refusing to even allow her to attend the funeral. A year later, Brandy's life was extinguished under suspicious circumstances, a case that remains forever unsolved. The weight of these losses reverberated through Whitaker's family like an unending echo of sorrow. His daughter, Brandy's mother, met a tragic fate seven years after he struck the jackpot. In the end, even the woman who had stood by him through the years, his wife, walked away from the shadows cast by the wealth and misfortune that had befallen them. For Jack Whitaker, this colossal jackpot brought a cruel paradox. 
The wealth he had dreamt of ended up tearing his family apart, robbing him not only of the people he loved, but also of the happiness that had once been within his grasp. In moments of profound reflection, he was compelled to admit, since I won the lottery, I think there is no control for greed. I think if you have something, there's always someone else that wants it. I wish I'd torn that ticket up. When the prize money became William Post the third's nightmare. In a world where having less than $3 in your bank account might lead most to pinch pennies, a man known to his friends as Bud dared to take the ultimate leap of faith. With just a pawned possession, he amassed a mere $40 and, in an audacious move, invested every last cent in a string of lottery tickets. The odds against him were steep, but fortune can be a fickle mistress. As luck would have it, one of those very tickets struck gold, propelling Bud into an elite club of millionaires with a jaw-dropping 16.2 million windfall courtesy of the Pennsylvania Lottery. Dreams are fulfilled in the blink of an eye, but as the saying goes, be careful what you wish for. You might expect that the man who had once lived the life of a drifter would now bask in the glow of his newfound riches. Yet the reality for William Post III was far from a smooth ride. After cashing in his jackpot, life took a sharp and unexpected turn, one that would soon become a tale of remorse. Everybody dreams of winning money, but nobody realizes the nightmares that come out of the woodwork or the problems he confessed. The dark cloud that descended on Post's life after his lottery triumph seemed incomprehensible. Flush with cash, he embarked on a spending spree of epic proportions. The first yearly installment of his winnings totaling a staggering 400,000 evaporated in a mere two weeks. The pendulum of fortune had swung in the other direction, and within a year, Post found himself ensnared by the clutches of a half-million-dollar debt. In a world where dreams can turn to dust, William Post's swift descent from riches to rags serves as an indelible lesson in the world of instant fortune, and a stark reminder that sometimes winning the lottery can be a precarious voyage. In the twisted tapestry of life, William Post's story took a tragic turn that left him haunted by the cruel irony of his lottery win. When love, money, and the courtroom converged, Post's life morphed into a nightmare of financial despair. It all started when his girlfriend sued him, claiming they had an agreement to share the fortune he'd won. The court sided with her, and when the time came to pay up, Post's lottery payouts were abruptly frozen. Staring at a bottomless pit of legal obligations, he had no choice but to declare bankruptcy. And the nightmare didn't end there. The multi-million dollar prize, which had once been a beacon of hope, dwindled down to a mere $2.6 million after the legal turmoil. In a bewildering twist of fate, the very wealth that was supposed to change his life for the better slipped through his fingers, leaving Post with a fraction of what he'd won. But it was the darkest chapter of his life that would make even the most vivid nightmares pale in comparison. In a shocking and horrifying turn of events, his own brother, lured by the intoxicating allure of the remaining fortune, orchestrated a chilling plot. A hitman was hired with the sinister intent to end Post and his wife's lives, all for the promise of an inheritance. At that point, Post had gone through five marriages and was embarking on his sixth. Thirteen years after his momentous lottery win, the curse that had befallen him continued to tighten its grip. A lonely and penniless figure, he survived on welfare payments, a far cry from the dreams he'd once held. In the end, the riches he'd won proved to be more of a burden than a blessing, leaving William Post with a life marked by haunting regrets and the unshakable feeling that perhaps that fateful lottery ticket had been a ticket to his undoing. When drama became unstoppable for the Powerball winner Willie Seeley, Wild Willie Seely, a name that once echoed with jubilation and dreams of boundless freedom, now whispers a chilling piece of advice to the latest Powerball winner in South Carolina. Disappear. Run away while you still have the chance. In 2013, Willie Seely and his fellow co-workers from Ocean County's vehicle maintenance garage basked in the glory of an even grander Powerball jackpot, a staggering $450 million. Dubbed the Ocean 16, they reveled in their newfound fortune at a press conference, with Willie stealing the limelight. He appeared before the world with a cascading beard, shaded eyes, and a worn straw hat, declaring their joy to the raucous applause of onlookers. We are very happy, 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 he proclaimed amidst the cheers. 
The next morning, Willie and his wife Donna took to the national stage on NBC's Today, making grand plans for their newfound life. Willie vowed to fish, hunt, and savor the freedom that fortune had promised. I can do what I want, he proclaimed with a warm smile, casting his gaze towards his wife. We can do what we want. Yet, within the blink of an eye, the tantalizing freedom has curdled into a bitter brew of remorse. In their first interview since being thrust into the national spotlight, the tone has shifted dramatically. Willie and Donna, once the epitome of happiness and blessing, now appear more like weary parents grappling with a troublesome child. The question lingers in the air. What happened next? Could it be that the grand dreams they envisioned have crumbled into regret and unforeseen troubles? Amidst the clamor of reporters and camera crews, an army of interview seekers and the lure of reality TV offers, a simple pastime like fishing became a distant dream. Strangers, both distant relatives and complete unknowns, besieged their once quiet home, all seeking a piece of their newfound wealth. A stark realization struck home, leaving them dazed and disheartened. After the division of the jackpot, which was split three ways thanks to three winning tickets and further divided among the 16 members of their lottery pool, they found themselves left with not even four million after taxes. This sum, while substantial, was not the life-altering, worry-free jackpot they had envisioned. It did afford the couples the means to purchase new vehicles, assist their families, and retire from their jobs. But the never-worry-about-money-again fantasy had faded. And within weeks, the Seelys found themselves lamenting the very curse of the lottery they'd once celebrated. There are days when I wish we were back to just getting paid every two weeks, Willie Seely conceded, as the stark reality of life after the lottery began to sink in. A poignant reminder that sometimes the dream of wealth can turn into a double-edged sword, forever altering the simplicity of life they once cherished. When Abraham Shakespeare had to pay a heavy price for winning a lottery, the tale of Abraham Shakespeare's $40 million lottery win in 2006 initially sparkled with the promise of generosity and newfound wealth. His heart seemed as big as his winnings, readily sharing his fortune with nearly anyone who asked. Yet the shadow of regret loomed large over his story. Abraham, a high school dropout and former convict who couldn't even read, unexpectedly struck gold when he stopped at a convenience store with a co-worker, handing over a few dollars for a chance at riches. Little did he know that his troubles would unravel almost immediately. His very co-worker dragged him to court, accusing Abraham of stealing the winning tickets and the jackpot that had changed their lives. Abraham may have emerged victorious in the lawsuit, but his battle with the lottery curse had only just begun. The weight of countless hands extended in pursuit of his wealth left Abraham Shakespeare lamenting, I'd have been better off broke, and voicing the crushing realization, I thought all these people were my friends, but then I realized all they want is just money. A stark reminder that the path paved with gold can sometimes lead to a place where friendships fade and the cost of fortune turns bittersweet. The story takes a chilling twist when Abraham Shakespeare crosses paths with D.D. Moore, who promises to write about his life and help him manage his newfound wealth. Little did he know that her intentions were far from benevolent. Once he agreed, Moore wasted no time squandering his riches on herself, indulging in luxuries like a Hummer and a Corvette, even seizing control of his home. However, Moore's greed knew no bounds. She escalated from stealing Shakespeare's fortune to committing the unthinkable. She ended his life and concealed his remains beneath concrete slabs at her boyfriend's residence. In a desperate bid to deceive the world, she concocted elaborate schemes, sending fake text messages and attempting to bribe Shakespeare's family into falsely claiming they had seen him. Moore's heinous crime was eventually uncovered, leading to her conviction for first-degree murder. In the end, Abraham Shakespeare likely looked back and wished he had never swapped his humble $5 for that life-altering lottery ticket. When Billy Bob Harrell's kindness went overboard, Billy Bob Harrell Jr. stood on the precipice of a life-altering moment in June 1997. With empty pockets and a revolving door of low-paying jobs, he and his family were no strangers to hardship. But then, the Texas Lotto delivered a seismic shift in his fortune, gifting him a colossal $31 million jackpot. The very first installment, a jaw-dropping $1.24 million, felt like the dawn of a new era, a glimmer of hope in the darkness of his past struggles. 
Far from the fairy tale ending he had envisioned, Billy Bob Harrell Jr.'s life took an unexpected twist. At the tender age of 47, this Texan embarked on what could only be described as an Annus Horribilis. The journey started with jubilation as he bid farewell to his Home Depot job and whisked his family away to the tropical paradise of Hawaii. He played the role of a benevolent benefactor, showering his church with generous donations, gifting cars and homes to loved ones, and even sharing the warmth of 480 turkeys with the less fortunate. However, the more Harold gave, the more he attracted unwelcome attention. His seemingly endless generosity led to incessant calls from strangers demanding their share. To make matters worse, he entered into a dubious deal with a company promising lump sum payments in exchange for his yearly lottery checks, ultimately leaving him with far less than his initial windfall. When Harold's marriage to Barbara Jean unraveled less than a year later, it proved to be the final straw in his turbulent journey. In a shocking and tragic turn of events, Billy Bob Harold Jr.'s son made a heartbreaking discovery on May 22, 1999. He found his father inside their home, unconscious and bearing a self-inflicted wound, just moments before Harold was to share dinner with his ex-wife. While some family members contested the notion that Harold could have taken such a drastic step, the undeniable truth was that he was far from content with his life. In a candid conversation with a financial advisor shortly before his untimely death, he uttered words that echoed with profound regret. Winning the lottery is the worst thing that ever happened to me. A stark reminder that riches, in some cases, can lead to a very different kind of poverty, one that takes a toll on the soul. When Callie Rogers learned important life lessons the hard way, Callie Rogers, the British teenager catapulted to wealth in July 2003 with a staggering three million, embarked on a whirlwind journey of generosity. At the tender age of 16, hailing from the serene town of Cumbria, England, she adorned her friends and family with lavish gifts, from cars to homes and extravagant vacations. Callie, it seemed, held the Midas touch, transforming her wildest dreams into glittering realities. But as the years unfolded, the euphoria of newfound riches began to wane. The headlines of 2009 told a different story, one of financial turmoil and looming bankruptcy. Callie's grand gestures of generosity had come at a steep price, eroding her fortune. She confessed to the Daily Mail, I've just wanted to make people happy by spending money on them, a poignant statement that hinted at the weight of remorse she now bore. Amidst the glittering excesses of wealth, Callie Rogers found herself ensnared in a paradox. The riches she'd won had failed to sow the seeds of happiness, instead fostering a growing sense of unease. A prevailing anxiety gnawed at her as she questioned the sincerity of those drawn to her newfound affluence. In the shadow of immense fortune, a sense of isolation encircled her. The turmoil within her heart ran deep. Callie revealed that she had grappled with the darkest of moments, having made two attempts to end her life, marking a stark contrast to the gleaming dreams of her youth. She confided in the Daily Mail, expressing a readiness to embrace a simpler life. In her profound reflection, she admitted, my life is a shambles, and hopefully now the money is all gone, I can find some happiness. It's brought me nothing but unhappiness. It's ruined my life. To make ends meet, she took on the arduous mantle of three cleaning jobs and sought solace in the company of her mother. Callie Rogers, once a symbol of riches, now found herself drawn to the embrace of modesty. In her own words, she expressed a yearning for happiness that had long eluded her. The glittering facade of wealth had crumbled, and she faced the stark reality that her jackpot had been a double-edged sword, casting a long shadow of unhappiness over her life. In the stark contrast between dreams fulfilled and the haunting reality of regrets, these stories illuminate the complex, often unspoken side of winning the lottery. As we journey through the lives of those who tasted the heights of wealth only to descend into the abyss of remorse, we're reminded that fortune, while dazzling, can also cast a shadow. The lottery's allure may promise a life of dreams, but it's the unexpected twists that make these stories all the more captivating, a potent reminder that happiness, ultimately, cannot be bought with a jackpot.